Director, Michelle O'Neill. And can I also say Comhargis on your new um, position and I look forward to your leadership in this Assembly. This is a defining moment for our politics here. Um, from today, the parties represented in this chamber undertake to cooperate in every way that we can in order to rebuild public trust and confidence in an engagement with this Assembly and its executive. Our mission must be to deliver good politics. Our mission must be to deliver on health, on education and jobs for everyone right across um, our communities. I see no contradiction whatsoever in declaring our firm commitment to power sharing with unionism in the Stormont Assembly, whilst also initiating a mature and inclusive debate about new political arrangements which examine Ireland's future beyond Brexit. Similarly, I see no contradiction in unionism working the existing constitutional arrangements whilst rightly taking its place in the conversation about what a new Ireland would look like. We can do this while maintaining our independent, distinct political identities and working in the best interests of all of the people. That is my firm commitment. After three years without functioning institutions, the five parties are here to form a new executive. It is my hope that we do so united in our determination to deliver a stable power sharing coalition that works on the basis of openness and transparency, that works on the basis of accountability, that works on the basis of good faith and with no surprises. I am really honoured to follow in the footsteps of my dear friend and comrade Martin McGuinness, taking up the position of Deputy First Minister as Joint Head of Government. I too pledge to follow the example which he set by actively promoting reconciliation and building bridges that we all can cross to end sectarianism and bigotry. Resistance to equality caused the executive to fall. A refusal to embrace citizens' identity and rights left people frustrated, left people angry and left people divided. This cannot be repeated. Today, each of us are called to lead, to build common cause for a society that makes room for and gives respect to every single citizen, to deliver a power sharing government that is truly grounded in fairness and in inclusion. And that has the courage to lead from the front in these times of change. Our politics must embrace civic society, trade unions, the voluntary and community sector, businesses, academia, farmers, church leaders, students, all must have a permanent place and a space to advise, input and hold this assembly and executive to account. We must work together to solve the problems that are facing this society. We will apply the full powers and resources available to us to address the major issues of the day, facing all those that we represent. I welcome the historic official recognition of the Irish language in this state. The guarantees for the language in law represents meaningful party of esteem for the community with which, from which I proudly come. Also, that the equality, mutual respect and all-Ireland approaches enshrined in the Good Friday Agreement are being embraced and that we deliver on the promises of 1998 to a new generation of young people. Today, we have a basis in which to form, to move forward in building a fairer society and to build good government. We will institute necessary reforms across the board in order to get things done, but also to get things right. In this new administration, we must have shared values and policy objectives set out in a new programme for government. <coughs> Yesterday, our nurses and healthcare workers had to take industrial action. Let's make that the last day they have to do that. This executive will move immediately to settle the ongoing healthcare workers' pay a party dispute. Our health service is in crisis and demands our urgent attention. Waiting lists are unacceptable. The health service needs reformed, so we have a big, big job of work to do. As we face in to the great uncertainties of Brexit, it is an imperative that we redouble our efforts to develop and rebuild a modern, competitive and sustainable economy where we open doors to trade, investment, jobs and tourism. We need decent jobs that value workers and protect their rights. We need to improve our competitiveness through investing in our public structures, our public services and infrastructure. <clears throat> to conclude, as we approach the centenary of partition, let's not refight the battles of the past. It's time to bring people together. We can open doors, we can let the future in, we can give people hope and we can give our young people opportunity. It's my sincere hope that 2020 is a time of real change, which reinvents the optimism and the hope 
that we have experienced before, but our young people have not. It is time now for parties to have courage as we all choose hope over fear and we enter a new era of politics in this society. I want to wish all members the very, very best, particularly all the new MLAs. And I want to welcome and congratulate all those ministers that will be appointed into government today. We have two years left of this mandate. Let's go out and make a difference. Gormila Mayogov. Uh, there will now be an opportunity for a representative from each of the parties to speak. Members should limit their remarks to not more than three minutes. I have the names of some members.